the Xenomorph XX121 or Plagiarist Prepotens is a very intriguing creature, from its natural physical abilities to its inherent ability to survive anything thrown at it. The creature is to be respected and for good reason. In today's data law, though we'll be covering a specific feature of the Xenomorph XX121's unique biology and its social behaviours, as we explore what exactly the Xenomorph Hive is, how it is constructed, and what exactly the Xenomorph Hive mind is. Sometimes referred to as a nest, the xenomorph hives are a largely advantageous step in both the life cycle of the individual xenomorph and a massive advantage for the overall species Plagiarist Prepotens and its continued survival. An XX121 hive is essentially an organic biomechanical looking structure constructed by the species in order to basically terraform a location to the needs of their species and the ideal conditions required for overmorph production and reproductive activities to occur. Full of twisting tunnels and corridors, the hive forms the perfect environment for the creatures to transverse, rest, reproduce, seek safety, and if need be, hunt from and within. Their ability to construct the hive makes them so much more deadly and far more efficient survivors, hunters, and killers. A creation of a hive structure is the result of either a sole xenomorph or a group of them working to create a home base for their coming brood, and in turn the explosion of their egg producing capabilities. Starting first with the egg morphing process generally before being superseded by the queen who will become the primary source of overmorph production. These processes leading to a massive increase in species overall population. An XX121 will normally begin producing a hive as soon as the creature has determined a suitable relatively safe area to begin the process. The qualifying criteria include relatively warm and humid environments, if they are available, and stand as a preference of the creatures. Potentially the hive mimics the ideal conditions for the creature's growth and comfortability, possibly replicating the conditions of their native environment. Whatever and wherever that location might be, a stage 4 drone type will be naturally drawn to producing a hive and will usually kickstart the process before seeking victims to cocoon within it for overmorphing purposes and eventually facehugger implantation. However, all this preparation is ultimately to serve the coming emergence of a stage 6 queen type XX121. The queen either molts from the progression of the life cycle of the species or is born directly through a royal facehugger implanting an altered form of the plagiarist prepotens to produce a queen type embryo. So how exactly does the Xenomorph produce this hive? Well, if you have ever had the displeasure and majesty of being face to face with a Xenomorph and survived to fight another day, you would likely have noticed the large amounts of drool-like secretions that the creature produces from its mouth. This thick, wet, gelatinous substance is the first stage of the hive. Xenomorphs produce this biological resin almost constantly, and upon their discovery of an ideal location, they will begin to concentrate the secretion of this resin into distinct shapes and mounts. This resin is understudied but it is likely much more than it appears to be, possessing a biological potentially living component, perhaps a bacterium or fungal-like cellular structure that means it can grow out from an area, consuming raw materials around it to grow larger. While this structure grows the xenomorph will continue to secrete more of the organic resin meticulously, taking care to create the perfect home for their queen and her coming eggs. How they construct the hive with tunnels, corridors, distinct rooms, ridges, and pockets to move in and out of and rest and hide within is unclear. Their ability to do so should speak again to their immense intelligence and planning capabilities, and it's not really understood to what degree the hive drives its own growth and expansion. Once developing the hive's actual structure is mostly made up of two components. You have the interior solidified support material, and then the other is the soft and usually unset resin exterior. This outer resin structure serves a major purpose, and that is for the capturing and immobilizing of potential hosts, organisms. The hive is a mixture of colors and transparency, while the hardest solidified areas are usually dark tinges of black, blue, green, and brown. The other outer, more viscous coatings are generally opaque in appearance with slight hints of color within it. Reports have stated that when within the hive, there is a smell like no other, being putrid and unbearable. The hive size can vary greatly, but its size is largely driven by the number of individuals within it and its time spent developing. Once the hive is in place and the queen has emerged, she will take her place in the safest, most well-guarded chamber of its structure. This location usually being the deepest, concentrated, and centralized area within the hive structure. After being situated here, her workers will help to create more hive structures around her to support her resting state and her developing egg sac. These support structures keep her comfortable and conserving as much energy as possible that can be redirected into producing more eggs. After these overmorphs are birth workers help to shift them about the hive's layout and then it's up to the rest of the hive to seek out new hosts. After they do this, the host will be brought back, 
They are then plastered to the walls and then encased in further resin by the workers, essentially cocooned awaiting their implantation by a Manumola Nox Hydria or the Face Hugger. This horrific entrapment keeps the host in a vulnerable position primed for implantation. Their arms and legs are restrained, and their torso is glued into position facing a corresponding overmorph, meaning that when the face hugger pulls or launches itself from its egg casing, there's basically nothing the host can do to resist its advance. The hive acts as the perfect place to breed, and if any unsuspecting individuals stumble upon it, then there is almost no hope for survival. By the time you see the hive, it's too late for you. If a host being cocooned is grievously wounded, the worker types xenomorphs have been observed sealing the wound with their secreted resin which act to stem the blood flow, ensuring the host survives at least long enough to be used for reproduction. The hive wastes little resources, as stated, prior, appearing to be a semi-living creature. Evidence to support this is given by what occurs to most hosts' dead bodies after they give birth to their chest bursters. These bodies are rapidly broken down and absorbed by the hive structure itself, essentially digesting them. These nutrients enter the hive structure and apparently act as nourishment for the xenomorphs within it as well as the continued growth and development of the hive structure. They can be broken into multiple locales with tunnels connecting them like a subway, or in the case of the planet Achilles 2.4, which is known as a xenomorph hive world. The hive on that particular planet is continental in scale, spanning an entire land mass. These hives are rumoured to be ruled by a prime xenomorph, some unknown stage 7XX121 above the dominance and control of even the queen, an empress or sometimes given the nickname the queen mother. This colossal beast not only rules over multiple hives but other queens as well. However, not enough evidence has surfaced to support their existence as of yet. Aside from gargantuan hive structures, sometimes a population can break off and form satellite hives around the central one. These hives can act as staging grounds for assaults on enemies or simply as an expansion for the hive to relieve population density in the original hive. A little researched phenomenon is the xenomorph hives that have been witnessed to create pools of diluted amounts of the engineer's chemical accelerant. We know for a fact that the xenomorph biology is heavily linked to this chemical and that the face huggers likely possess a derivative of the mutagen in the form of Plagiarus prepotens bacterium, which they deposit into the host to generate a chest burster. Either way, some hives have discovered the ability to produce it and collect it in substantial quantities enough so that they are able to expose specific hosts to it before implantation. This can result in new and variable xenomorph offspring from these mutated hosts. This might just be the most terrifying fact of a xenomorph hive. The fact that they are aware of this mutagenic ability to enhance the hive's overall genetic makeup, it adds even more mystery and unknowns into our collective understanding of these creatures. Each and every hive known to be reported conducting these behaviors should be immediately dealt with by orbital strike. It will be the only way to be sure that this cannot continue. We have so far talked about the nature, construction, and composition of the hive, however, one other important result of its creation we have yet to fully address. As stated, numerous times through this data log, the hive structure and community formed around it appears to result in a collective consciousness of the XX121s that far exceeds the intelligence of any single creature. It would appear that xenomorphs within these hives appear to be able to link their collective intelligence through some method or another. Together, they become more intelligent and the more that join the hive, the higher their collective knowledge and intelligence becomes. How this hive mind is formed and via what stimuli method it functions is largely unknown. Some suggest the queen is solely responsible and emits chemical pheromonal signals to conduct the hive and its inhabitants' behavior. Others suggest a mental connection with one another perhaps through some little understood organs that allows the creature to communicate electrotelepathically. No matter the method though the resulting coordination between such an aggressive and hostile predatory species is downright uncanny and completely terrifying. In the rare cases where two separate XX121 hives war and one hive is left without a queen, this queen's overmorphs and guards in the form of the Praetorians will immediately be killed or destroyed by the new queen and her own guard and brood. The overmorphs are wiped out because they carry the rivals and now deceased queen's genetic information, while the Praetorians are eradicated due to the fact they are instinctually loyal to their queen and their queen alone. In opposition to this, the scouts, drones and workers are easily assimilated and brought into the existing brood. Soldiers are also able to be absorbed into the new hive mind with less success, so for the most part the new matriarch will simply have them destroyed along with the other outcasts. This brutal process of elimination if further studied could shed a better light on how the creatures produce and harness the insane advantages their hive mind provides. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardine. 
or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia, and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.